Hi there, I'm Indra Lucero, director of Elephant Circle, founder of the Birthrights Bar Association, they, them pronouns. I'm Latinx from the Rocky Mountain Southwest region of the United States. The journey of how I came to be involved in midwifery probably even goes back to my childhood. I'm the oldest of four and got to be there when my two youngest siblings were born at home. Um, and those were, of course, some of my earliest memories and our captivating memories, and that stayed with me. Um, so then when I was forming a family as a queer family already outside of the mainstream, I decided to have a home birth as well with our youngest kid. I didn't just date our oldest kid. Um, so for our youngest kid, I had a home birth too with midwives who provided incredible care. And that also was captivating experience. So they, these captivating experiences were compounding. And then a couple years later, there was a midwifery conference in town. I took the day off of work. I worked at a school at the time. Also decided to check out some law school classes on the same day, feeling like I'm so weird. How can I be interested in law and midwifery at the same time? They felt like opposite sort of things. And I mentioned that to some of the midwives at the conference and they were like, no, this is not opposite. This is amazing. We need a hotshot team of lawyers to defend midwives. And it all came together in that moment for me. And I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is my life's path. I'm going to help be part of or create a hotshot team of lawyers for midwives. And like the year later, I was in law school. <laughs> so part of finding, developing the Birthrights Bar Association was the goal of building that hotshot team of lawyers. What I found while I was still in law school is that there were hardly any people who understood this, that understood both midwifery and the law that impacted mid midwifery. And in order to have a force, a legal force, there needed to be a lot more community building and education among lawyers, um, both among people who might become lawyers who cared about midwifery and among people who were already lawyers but didn't know anything about midwifery. So we started the Birthrights Bar Association as a membership organization for lawyers and legal advocates so that we could focus on legal issues related to birth and really develop expertise. So that's what we've been doing. And now the Birthrights Bar Association is starting to grow. We have a Canadian chapter and um, certainly work with folks all over the world because as it turns out, this sort of thing is needed internationally. And um, there are little there are little groups of folks like the Birthrights Bar Association all over, and we're just connecting and learning from each other. Working in this area is like working on the minority issues of the minority issues of the minority issues. Um, so when it comes to trans and non-binary folks at the crossroads of midwifery, it's really about folks who are unseen and unserved by the system, either being unseen and unserved by midwives. And so doing education or for midwives about how there's this population out there that could really be served by midwifery because of what midwifery has to offer, because of the individualized care, the attention to whole beingness, and or then we're working with gender, non-binary, and trans folks who are have been served well by midwifery and who are advocates and want to see more folks understand that midwifery could really be a place for them. So it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of talking to folks about things maybe they've never thought about. Like a lot of trans and gender non-binary folks have never even thought about, never even heard about midwifery. <laughs> 
And a lot of midwives have never even heard about non-binary. Like, what even is that? So I I love working in this area because there's a lot of opportunity to learn in every direction. One of one of the things that I love to point out too is that there are a lot of connections between the kind of marginalization that midwives experience and the kinds of marginalization that trans and non-binary folks experience. Um, that really there are some similarities there. One of the things that midwives don't often know is that the vast majority, sadly, of trans and gen gender non-binary folks face discrimination in healthcare. A lot of times they're even denied healthcare blatantly from healthcare providers. And I find when midwives learn about that, they are shocked and also really see the opportunity for midwives to step in. Since midwives are so good at being responsive to you know whoever is before them, um, regardless of the details of that family's life. So I, I think there's a lot of healing that can be provided by midwifery to, to trans and gender non-binary folks. Um, it's truly profound to have a healthcare provider accept, just accept you, just like, you don't, it's nothing fancy. <laughs> and that's what I love to reinforce with midwifery. It's just midwifery do the midwifery thing with gender non-binary and trans folks and it will be profound i i know that and that's part of why i do this work is because i felt so seen and cared for by my midwives i didn't it didn't feel hard to just show up and be me i felt 100% 100% accepted and that, you know, also was 20, 20 years ago. <laughs> um, things have things have changed a lot between now and then in terms of awareness um, of gender, that gender isn't a binary. The other thing I really like to remind folks is that more and more young people identify as non-binary. So of course, for midwives, being tuned into what the younger generations are thinking and feeling in terms of gender is critical because those are the folks of reproductive age. Um, and so I think there's, I think there's an exciting opportunity to heal a lot of the harm that the healthcare system does to gender non-binary and trans folks. <laughs> I think one of the most important things to to understand about this opportunity that midwives have to serve trans and gender non-binary folks is that the same historical moment that worked to push midwives out, to marginalize midwives as community health providers, is also the moment that sex and gender were defined medically as a binary, despite the fact that during that same time, the late night, the late 1800s, 19th century, you know, doctors and scientists were discovering that in fact, sex was more complicated than a binary, that um, sex traits didn't always track with a binary. <laughs> I chuckle because it's so absurd. I honestly think it's absurd how the data was clearly coming in. Data, not, this is not a binary. And yet then the output was nonetheless, gender is a binary. There's male, there's female. You got to fit in this box or you got to fit in that box. Even though, you know, like biologically, that isn't reality which does come as a bit of a shocker to some folks, but it's awesome. And it's not just manifesting in humans. It turns out sex is not a binary in, in any species really. And there's some amazing species that I think are worth studying and looking at just for the marvel of it. I mean, look, life is amazing. And look at the, this, look at this profound 
diversity. So I do think it's critical for midwives to optimally serve trans and non-binary folks to, to grapple with that history and that reality that there are forces that pushed to define gender as a binary. And it really had to do with power and the same power dynamics that oppress midwives all over the world. So that's why I, I'm excited about bringing these things together because it really, to me, has to do with, um, you know, liberating midwives as much as it has to do with honoring and respecting the diversity of humanity. <laughs> Um, so it is critical to understand also that sex and gender are two different things. They obviously overlap and relate to each other. There's a kind of conversation between sex and gender. Um, and it's possible to learn about both of these things. And I encourage folks to learn about both of these things. What do we know about sex? How does it work? Um, a lot of folks think that sex is just the secondary sex characteristics or just about genitalia or just about reproductive organs. That's not even true. Sex itself is very, a complex of things. And then gender too, it turns out, gosh, gender is a complex of things. Um, it's not just how we present, though that's part of it. It's not just how we feel, though that's part of it. Um, it's It's also how we understand ourselves. Um, so I, I'm excited <laughs> because what I think midwifery offers is a place and a way for people to, to be seen as whole. That's what, that's, at its best, that's what I think the midwifery model of care offers. And I think that is profound, particularly in, um, you know, the, the, family transition that is birth. It's kind of an opportunity for a whole family system to be born. So being seen as whole in that moment, I think, you know, clearly uh, that's why I do this work. I think that's good for humanity. I think that's like the best stuff. <laughs> it, it actually even transcends the the birthing person or even the parents because chances are any of these families that midwives serve could could have a child who's intersex so that's that's another thing to consider and that's a place where i see midwives as being important um but that family could also have a kiddo who is transgender or gender non-binary and so having in those early parenting moments a healthcare provider who even just makes it plain and simple the the difference between sex and gender and and acknowledges that neither of these things are on a binary could be very important in the life of that family and in the life of that family's kids when it comes to intersex kids in particular sometimes if if a newborn is born with atypical genitalia, which of course absurdly is how, how sex is evaluated upon birth, that can be a very scary and traumatic experience for a family, especially if they're giving birth in the medical model where that difference is pathologized. But I see a real opportunity for the midwifery model to be much more receptive to the range of normal. I mean, that's one of the phrases that I learned from the midwifery model, that there's a range of normal and intersex is within the range of normal. So giving a family the opportunity to experience their precious newborn as within the range of normal and not pathology, pathologizing that baby upon arrival could be a profound gift that a midwife can give. I mean, here I am, like I said, 20 years later, talking about the range of normal, <laughs> which is totally something that I learned from my midwives in those early parenting days where it's stressful and you don't know if you're doing it right. And um, you're trying to figure out how to nurse your baby. And it's 
it's just so helpful to hear those messages from your midwife. Like you're doing okay. This there's a range of normal. You might do it a little bit this way. Somebody else might do it a little faster, a little slower. And that philosophy can and should be applied to intersex folks, trans and gender non-binary folks, and it can be profound. It can prevent traumatic and unnecessary surgeries. I mean, we know that that's one of the things the midwifery model can do with regard to unnecessary cesarean surgeries. But a lot of folks don't appreciate that the midwifery model of care could also prevent unnecessary surgeries on intersex newborns. Thank you.